So this is the Sawyer S1 filter. It retails for about $60. And if you're like me, you hadn't actually heard of this one before. It is more of a specialty filter. So most people familiar with the Sawyer line know the Squeeze, the Micro, and the Mini. Well, uh, those get Girardia, Cryptosporidio, etc. out. However, this is made specifically to deal with pesticides, which is an issue out here on the Florida Trail. This filter seems perfectly suited for the Florida Trail, actually. So what it is, it's actually a uh, micro top filter. So it's still going to get the same amount of stuff out. You're still going to have issues with like tannins getting through. But they added this rubber reservoir to the bottom, which is filled with a foam. They won't say what exactly they've added to the foam, but it is something that will counteract pesticides in the water. I talked to Sawyer customer support. They said it's good for about 1,600 uses. Now, there is no way to tell when it is uh, run out, and they did say it depends on how the levels of the pesticides in the water. Apparently, they're working on a revision at some point that is gonna have the ability to test to see whether it's worn out or not. Personally, I don't intend to actually uh, be using this that long. Other interesting facts, this is a micro squeeze on the top. That means it is going to have all the usual issues that the Sawyer Micro has. Uh, the joke on the PCT last year was, you know, friends don't let friends micro or mini because you won't like your friends because they're going to take forever to filter their water. Uh, it's not bad at first, but it does clog up, and I just prefer the, the uh, normal squeeze. Now, the cool thing is they included this just because uh, they wanted it to be kind of more compact. You can see this is already kind of long. You can unscrew this and add a Sawyer squeeze onto the top. So me, for example, I had a Sawyer squeeze that I was carrying anyway when I started this trail. And if I was not wanting to just try this out as it comes in the box, I could have just unscrewed this, added the squeeze, and then I would have had, you know, both types of filters available to me. Honestly, one of the hardest things about this filter is just managing to fill up the reservoir. So I'm actually probably going to be sending this uh, back home either here or pretty soon because I haven't been using it much on this section. Now in the southern section, uh, when you exit Big Cypress, you spend a lot of time down by canals and there are warnings all over the place about the amount of pesticides in that water. That's really when you need this. Now. I bought it and I had it sent to Clewiston thinking, oh, I, I you know, want to have it as a backup. But honestly, the volunteers this year have done such a good job with all of the water caches along the way. I didn't need it. I used it a handful of times and uh, most of the time there it was just for a little bit extra comfort. Now keep in mind I have been going stoveless on this one so far. So I haven't been going through as much water as I would normally. If I was making coffee, if I was cooking dinners, then maybe I would have used it more. As is, my carry capacity of two and a half liters has been pretty much fine. So basically, if you're doing something like the Florida Trail where you were worried about pesticides in the water, this is a really good peace of mind sort of thing. You are gonna pay in weight. I mean, this is rubber, it's not light, and that foam never dries out, so you're always carrying weight. Uh, but it's better than drinking pesticides. They do also have two other uh, versions of this. There's an S2 and an S3, which filter out different things. The S3 will actually take heavy metals out of the water even.